they may have a greater need for it. And this particular verse has a very beautiful story behind it. That one of the companions of the Prophet والسلام, he was exhausted and he was famished and hungry as if he had not eaten for days. And so he came into the company of the Prophet والسلام, and so the Prophet asked, who is going to feed this man? And he asked and he asked until finally one man from the Ansar, he responded, me, Ya Rasulullah. Despite the reality in his home is that he only had barely enough food for himself and his children. But he decided instead that we were going to give up our meal for tonight. And this is why this verse was revealed. Why They prefer others over themselves. And they repel evil with good. They repel evil with good. They don't allow themselves to be brought down to the level of those who are trying to bring them down. Rather, they respond with goodness. And Allah Ta'ala, He's very clear about this matter. He says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ He said that good and evil, they are by no means equal. They are not equal whatsoever in terms of what? Virtue. And then He says, اِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ You should re respond or push back with that which is better. And this is the type of virtue that can turn an enemy into a friend. As the verse continues, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ عَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ That all of a sudden the one that between you and him was enmity or animosity, all of a sudden it is like he is an ally and a close friend. This is the type of character that we are being called to by the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا He describes this group of people, the servants of Ar-Rahman. They walk about the earth in humility. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا you know, sometimes we have this concept in our society that we have to fight fire with fire. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's calling us rather to extinguish that fire by our lights. That we don't engage in these type of scenarios and incidents. And it's not about the other person, but it's really about our own dignity and our own virtue. Because you can't defend your virtue by giving it up in the process. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikr al-hakim. Aqulu qawlin hadha wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum wa lisa'i al-Muslimin min kulli dhamb. Fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-tawabu al-Rahim. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Indeed, this Quran, it guides to that which is most upright. And I'll close with the last virtue for today, and that is being inclined towards forgiveness. And the prime example of this virtue, we find it in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And we know that he was threatened and he was kicked out by his father. But what I want to focus on is how he responded as he embodied that statement, Qalu Salama. As his father said, anta an ya Ibrahim. Are you turned off by my idols, O Ibrahim? La illam tantehi la arjumannaka wahjurni maliya. And if you do not desist, then I am going to stone you and get away from me for a while. Get out of my sight. And despite the fact that Ibrahim salam is being threatened and he's being kicked out, he doesn't uh, break everything in the house. Rather, he responds in the most virtuous way. 
in this very difficult scenario. Qala salamun alayk. Peace be upon you. And on top of that, say, astaghfiru laka rabbi. I am going to seek forgiveness for you from my Lord. And we find that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he even pled with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on behalf of the people of Lut. Yujadiluna fi qawmi Lut. He was pleading with Allah for the forgiveness, delay them, grant them respite, despite the crimes that they were committing. And we know that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he despised the idols. But even so, he still hesitated to invoke the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He still was trying to find a way to invoke the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is character and virtue of the highest level. As he said, Rabbi inna hunna adlalna kathiran min nas He said, my Lord, they have, speaking of the idols, they have led astray so many people. فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي And so whoever follows me, then they are from me. And you would expect that after that he would say, whoever does not follow me, then they are not from me. But in his inclination towards forgiveness, he doesn't say that. He says, whoever follows me, then they are from me. وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ He's still trying to find a way for mercy and forgiveness. Right? Whoever disobeys me, then you are the forgiving and you are the merciful. And this tells us that it is virtuous, not just to be inclined towards forgiveness, but to actually put your neck on the line, pursuing the salvation of others. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of people whose character that reflect the character approved of by the Qur'an. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us reflect the character that was embodied by the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And may he make us strivers towards the pinnacle of virtue and not just those who want to live as mediocre Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala embed in us the quality of ihsan. اللهم لك الحمد في الأولين ولك الحمد في الآخرين ولك الحمد في كل وقت وحين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك أستغفرك وأتوب إليك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذب نار قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن